bom dia, boa tarde, boa noite, or whatever the case may be. My name is Marcus and I am the host of the Black Brazil Today YouTube channel, as well as the blackbraziltoday.com blog, where I analyze Brazil from the perspective of race. So tonight I'm going to revisit an article I did on the Black Brazil Today blog, uh, what's a Looks like it's about seven years ago now, well, almost seven years. It's from August of 2016. And this article is called uh, Preto o Negro. In Portuguese, both mean black, but which term should be used to define black people in Brazil? Ghanaian Brazilian man's video on the topic goes viral. So um, this is something that, that I learned, you know, when I first started digging into what I'll say, coisas do Brasil, you know, Brazilian stuff, or Brazilian things. And I came to understand that there were two terms in Portuguese that mean black. And, you know, as the article states here, preto or, or negro, how they pronounce, Americans pronounce negro, they pronounce it negro. So, you know, I've talked about this question of, uh, you know, a lot of people will always try to come to con some conclusion about how many black people live in Brazil? And I still get, you know, I get a lot of people that pop up on the channel saying, you know, Brazil has the largest black population outside of uh, outside of Africa. Then you get some Brazilians, mostly you're usually white Brazilians who will pop up from time to time. Like, look, you know, this whole thing about, you know, there being 110, 115 million black people in Brazil, you know, that's a sham. You know, that's that's some leftist rhetoric. And, you know, when I first got into looking into the race question in Brazil, it was confusing in the beginning because, you know, first of all, you know, I've said this, you know, hundreds of times, but, you know, most, I know when I was growing up, most of us never, when we thought about Brazilians, we never thought that there were, you know, a substantial number of black people there. As I said, you know, if you grew up in the 70s or 80s, the only Brazilian you really knew was Pelé. And Pelé was, you know, was a dark skinned black man. You know, he just, passed away at the end of last year. But in general, most people didn't think of Brazil as a black country. So when I started getting into it late 1999, early 2000, you know, I came across this question of how many black people are there actually in the country? And you would get estimates as low as 8 million. And then you would have all the way on the other end, people would say oh, there's about 120 million black people in Brazil. And that's at a time when I think the population in the country was about 180 million at that time. So I'm like, you know, how do you explain this wide discrepancy between 8 million when people go, if they really would implement something similar to uh, the United States one drop rule, then they would go as far as 120, 120 million. But generally back in, you know, the end of the 20th century, it was kind of like people would accept about 75, 80 million black people in Brazil, right? And you could only get to that number if you combine two categories. On the Brazilian, official Brazilian census, you have five color categories. You know, preto meaning black, pardo meaning brown or mixed, branco meaning white, angel meaning Indian or, you know, Brazilian, uh, Brazilian Indians, Native Americans, or you have amarelo, which literally means yellow, but it defines people of Asian descent. The term Negro or Negro doesn't even appear on the offense official uh, status records or rather uh, statistics on this uh, racial category of the country, uh, classification rather. You know, all of these terms are considered to be cold, color coded terms, right? And it, it, it is, is quite, it's, you, I've come to the conclusion after years of saying, okay, Puerto plus Pardo equals the black population in Brazil. And for years, that's what I, you know, I accepted that because that's where Afro-Brazilian activists, that's what they would argue. You know, they would argue that Puertos and Pardos or blacks and browns, they were socioeconomically in the same boat. Uh, they both face discrimination. So it's like, you know, a lot of Pardos in the country are of visible African ancestry. So they say, you know, it's, 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 the, the pardo or mixed brown population socioeconomically is much closer to the preto or black population than they are to the white population. 
So I, you know, that's what, <clears throat> that's generally what I accepted uh, during those years, you know, the first years, well, you know, up until about, I'd say about six years ago when I started questioning, hmm, maybe there's something to this when activists on the other side say, look, you can't classify, classify all pardus as black. And I, I totally agree with that. After having lived in Brazil for X amount of years and having visited different parts of the country over the last two decades, I've seen people in Brazil who you simply cannot classify in terms of just one racial box. Even when, you, you know, you can look at people, they might have light brown skin, but oftentimes the same way that you can look at an Asian person who has fair skin, but it's the features that makes that person recognized as of Asian ancestry. It's the same thing with black folks. And, you know, I think a lot of us just, you know, African-Americans in general, we're accustomed to seeing, you know, people of African descent with light skin. So it's really not an issue. But as I said, you meet some people in Brazil who you simply cannot categorize. It, it, it's, you, know, you have to listen to what both sides are saying. Some people will say, you know, anybody with African ancestry is just black. On the other hand, you have people who will say, look, if you, you including these white looking people who are just almost completely white and you're including them in the black category, it kind of like, it takes away from the black category because you have whitened the category so much as if you don't accept blackness as it is. You know, if you have a beauty competition and you have this extremely fair skinned woman who has very mixed features, it's like, are you really honoring blackness if you have a woman who's all, who's on the cusp of being white? So, you know, I had to start, you know, reformulating how I looked at the race and color classification in Brazil some years ago when I saw the question of the quota system. You know, on the one hand, black activists were saying anybody who's Preto or Pardo, black or brown, they should be able to have quotas and get into universities under the quota system. But then at a certain point, they started cutting the line, like, okay, this guy's not black enough. So it showed me that even the black activists, the Afro-Brazilian activists, were not completely clear on what constituted a black person. Because, you know, my argument at that point had to switch, like, okay, you can't use people classified as pardus, mixed or brown, as part of the numbers that, you know, blow up the idea that Brazil has the largest Black population outside of Africa. You can't use those people to inflate the numbers to over 100 million, but then want to exclude them when they try to take advantage of the, uh, the affirmative action policies. So, it's, you know, it's like a catch-22. A catch so, this piece that I'm doing today, like I said, it came out probably almost seven years ago. And it's intriguing because the question of preto or negro has been going on for years in Brazil. Um, negro being a term that people say if a person identifies themselves as negro, it's saying that they have some sort of uh, racial consciousness. Whereas preto uh, is just like a color coded term. For many people, the term preto should only be used for very dark skinned people. You know, again, which makes this, it, it makes trying to understand the difference between, you know, uh, Pareto and Pardo, it makes it a little more difficult because, okay, which term should we use here? Um, let, me, let me just get into this piece because if I, if I continue to try to explain this, I'll be sitting here for like an hour because this is a topic that can go on forever. But it's intriguing that it was a Ghanaian Brazilian, you know, a guy from Ghana who's been living in Brazil for several decades and he made a point of discussing this, uh, you know, this debate between Preto and, and Negro. So let's go ahead and discuss this. This is the guy. His name is uh, Nabi Clifford. Again, he's originally from Ghana, but he's been living in Brazil at the time, at least about 30 years. You know, uh, these days you have a lot of, you know, you, you there's been extensive uh immigration from Haitians living in Brazil and you getting you're getting more and more Africans from the continent you know setting up shop in Brazil of course nowhere near as many as you have in the United States but just the fact that you have other black people from the diaspora moving to Brazil you know it it this is something that should be studied the experience of people from the African diaspora settling in Brazil I'm curious you know what's their experience but that's another story 
Anyway, let me just get into this article. <clears throat> in director Spike Lee's 1992 epic film about the legendary human rights activist Malcolm X, there was an important scene in which the convict then known as Mac Malcolm Little learned how racism could even influence words and terms in the English language. As Malcolm began making his transition to becoming a conscious black man, he soon realized how terms such as black male, black bald, black sheep, and many others, many other words with negative connotations were connected to the term black. He wondered, why did the white man's dictionary associate terms such as evil, wicked, and dirty to blackness, while terms such as pure, honest, square dealing were associated with whiteness? Needless to say that these same associations apply to negritude and branquitude, meaning blackness or whiteness in Brazil. Later in his years as a leading voice in the nation of Islam, Malcolm X would lead the way in the promotion of the usage of the term black instead of the then popular term used to classify Americans of African descent, Negro. For Malcolm, Negro referred to quote unquote Uncle Toms, meaning passive people of color who would remain obedient to the rules of white supremacy and thereby helping to keep them quote unquote in their place. Over the course of several decades, Americans of African descent would transition from the terms color to Negro, to Black, Afro-American, and finally to the current, current term uh, African-American. During the transition from Negro to Black, there were many within the population who vehemently rejected defining themselves as Blacks. According to some, Black was synonymous with being a rabble rouser, a troublemaker, which they didn't wish to be, and as such, in some ways, proved Malcolm X's point. Now, speaking of this, you know, when I get into... Uh, this transition of, of Brazilians of African ancestry transitioning into a politically conscious term such as Negro, you know, African-Americans will look like, dang, they still using the term Negro down there? And it's like, well, you can't really look at it that way because the context is different. Whereas Black Americans transition from color to Negro to Black, people defining the term black as a person who's proud of their African ancestry and has some degree of uh, political consciousness. In Brazil, they, they transition from the term preto or, and sometimes pardo into the category negro, which is, it's, it, for people who use negro, it, it's believed that that person has some level of racial consciousness. So we can't say that when Brazilians are using negro, the context is similar but different the same way, again, African-Americans transition from Negro to Black in the same way that Black Brazilians are transitioning from Preto to Negro. And now there's even more discussion about, well, should we be using Negro or Preto? This, this discussion, when I started looking at this, uh, this whole debate, it reminded me of this old Richard Pryor album that, you know, my father had in his album collection, you know. I know a lot of people had this experience where, you know, you're a little kid and you sneak into your, your parents' album collection, listen to some of those comedy albums that you're not supposed to be listening to. You have it way down, you know. I think Eddie Murphy talked about that once, but yeah, a lot of us used to do that. So there was a skit on a Richard Pryor album, I believe it was called uh, Shooting Craps After Dark. And this small section of that album, it's, it's, it, it speaks of what I'm talking about right now and actually on NPR, they had an article in here that actually talked about that. They didn't quote here which album this came from, but as I had that album in, well, my father had that album in his collection. I know this is what this is from. So this is Mr. This is Richard Pryor talking. He says, you know, being black was being cool. I remember it wasn't black in those days because black wasn't beautiful yet. I remember you couldn't even say black. You call the dude black. He said, I don't play that. You know, don't call me black. I'm a Negro. And he continues, I remember when a black man comes through our neighborhood, man, dressed in like the clothes you have on. A black man, you know what I'm talking about? Be black and be proud. He says, my parents were like, that ninja is crazy. So what we have to understand is that the same transition that Brazilians are making into a black identity that has something to do with having a racial consciousness. African-Americans did that too, because at once upon a time, a lot of Americans of visible African descent, they rejected using the term black. They wanted to be called Negro. You know, it was like black was offensive to them in the same way that for many people in Brazil who would be black, 
the, the politically uh, tinged term negro, a lot of people rejected for several years. And it's only been over the last few decades that using the term negro in Portuguese in Brazil to define somebody of African descent with a certain level of consciousness is only really become vogue in the last couple of decades, right? And it's actually intriguing because a lot of people are thinking like, no, we should be using the term preto instead of negro. And that's, I'm going to get into that also. So let's go back to the article. Now, it's, it's important that I point out this the whole discussion going on, whether should we should be using negro or preto. If you punch that in, in on, a, on a Google right now, you'll find it. A lot of people are asking the question. This is, uh, they always ask me, Luana, is it right to say negro or preto? Negro preto here. Is it preto or negro? Preto versus negro. You know, what's the difference? You know, uh, negro preto. Uh, is there a correct form? So, you know, uh, ne negro preto, black leadership uh, reflects about the use, I guess, of the term. And you have one here, preto, pardo, and negro. Understand what are the differences. So this is a discussion that can go on and on. This is just what I wanted to talk about here. Um, because it is an important piece to understand when you're trying to, you know, just get an idea of how race and color is is experienced in Brazil. You know, uh, <laughs> there was one other article. There was other, one other piece that I wanted to show how Pareto is li it literally means black as does negro. But in some ways, calling somebody a Pareto or a negro in Brazilian society for many years, it was considered an insult. I actually have to show you this on a uh, uh, a translation website that I often use. Anyway, okay, so let me um, continue on with this article. In Brazil, there has been a similar evolution, you know, again, from the United States saying color to Negro to black. Uh, you have this term, what people would say, colored people back in the day. In Brazil, they say, you know, uh, pessoas de cor or persons of color. Persons of color, meaning black, brown, anybody who's not white in Brazil could be called a person of color, but it generally, it often refers to just black people or even brown people. Um, and again, this transition, you see it, it is very visible in, in, in Brazil because you have a lot of people who for years define themselves as some ambiguous term or a term defining their mixed race. You know, whether it be mulatto or pardo or uh, mestizo, a lot of these people are transitioning into the term negro. But it's still problematic because as the term negro doesn't appear on an official uh, color, uh, the color classification on the official census in Brazil, it's hard to say how many people identify with this term. And that's also problematic. I have to get back into that. But let me finish where I was going. Um, so in Brazil, there has been a similar evolution, although with subtle differences. As has been discussed in various posts here dealing with racial classification, Brazilians of African descent have long attempted to distance themselves from terms such as preto or negro, both of which mean black. Decades ago, and for still for some still today, these terms were and are deemed offensive and to be avoided at all costs. Terms such as moreno or mulatto not only signified that one was a product of some degree of racial mixture, but also denoted people who lacked a sense of politicized racial consciousness. Over the course of several decades, this has changed dramatically as today millions of Brazilians of African descent proudly define themselves as negros and negras, you know, this being the masculine and the feminine uh, term, uh, meaning black. Um, it also signifies a rising black consciousness movement. But due to the official choices of race and color on the official Brazilian census form, it's difficult to say just how many Brazilians really define themselves as negros or negras. Generally, within Afro-Brazilian activist circles, the terms negro, the masculine form, and negra, the feminine version, are the terms that the population of African descent should utilize to define themselves in a racial sense, instead of the terms preto and preta which were thought to define the actual color black as in a reference to say black and white films, for example, uh, in Portuguese, black and white in this sense means preto e branco. Within the movement being black is essentially a political position in which one assumes a black racial identity. But as many Brazilians use the term interchangeably, is there any difference between the terms? University of Sao Paulo social anthropologist Lilia Moritz Schwartz provided a clue as to how the terms preto and negro were seen during the slavery era in Brazil. 
The term negro made reference to the rebellious, disobedient slave, while preto referred to a loyal captive. This can be noted in a news story featured in the Cojea Polistano, meaning the, uh, the Sao Paulo Post newspaper, in 1886. This is two years before slavery ended in Brazil in 1888. Okay, so this is the story. One particular day, the black man, Joao Congo, was quietly working on his master's farm or plantation when he noted that two fugitive black men, or negros, were approaching, who soon said, leave this life behind, preto vedio, meaning old black, is not for you, to which the loyal preto replied, I'm not going to go wandering about here and there like some runaway Negro. Irritated, the Negroes retorted, die then, you preto covarde, meaning you black coward. So as we can see, in the context of Brazilian terminology and folklore, the preto vedio, meaning the old, literally old black man, it refers to the old docile, submissive folkloric figure, somewhat similar to the Uncle Tom that Malcolm X referred to, while Negro or Negro was associated with the runaway, disobedient, and possible revolutionary. Also, you can see a little bit of this when in this uh, explaining this this uh, this incident that happened during the slave period. It's, it's a little bit re remind it reminds me a little bit of uh, when my, uh, Malcolm X was talking about the difference between the house Negro and the field Negro. All right, that's what you see a little bit here, and how the runaway black people or Negroes defined the preto as being a coward, as being submissive, as being docile, like he wanted to stay a, a slave while the people who wanted to escape, they were seen as negros. So here we see this again, this political meaning. The question over which term should be utilized continues today and was recently brought to the fore after the stir created by a video by a Ghanaian, Ghanaian man who has lived in Brazil for 30 years. The Ghanaian man, Nabi Clifford, prefers the term preto, and he is not the only one. While negro is still more popular, a more popular term used to organize and promote specifically Black events throughout Brazil, preto still remains quite common. Every year in Sao Paulo, thousands of Afro-Brazilians flock to the year's most popular Black cultural event called Feira Preta, which means basically Black Fair. It's like Black Expo, one of those type of events. Uh, last week, we featured a story about three Black women who provoked controversy for organizing a summer camp for Black children. This is what's funny in Brazil. It's like when, when it's an all-in-white, it's, it's an all-white environment, nobody seems to have a problem with that. But if Black people organize themselves in all-Black, you know, whatever gatherings or events, then suddenly it becomes racist, right? The group calls itself Das Pretas, meaning of the Black women. We also have the slogan Poder para o povo preto, meaning power for the black people. And various bloggers and vloggers such as Gabi Oliveira, uh, G. Pretas, who use the term preta in the names of their groups or monikers. Okay, so this is uh, Nabi Clifford, calls himself the ambassador of reggae. Clifford's video on the difference between preto and negro went viral and led to a long debate. Now, before delving into the question more in terms of Nabi Clifford's opinion on the topic, I consulted with the historian Kwame Asafu Nayasafu Atunda, the administrator of the Black men's, Black Brazilian men's group social network known as Omens Pretos, which means Black men. Again, uh, uh, I, I asked him why he named the group uh, Omens Pretos instead of Omens Negros, and Atunda responded, the term negro beyond all the negative and pejorative content is not and never was a classification that Africans gave themselves. Kemet or Anchigo Egito, meaning ancient Egypt, denominated themselves as pretos and also the Anunnakis called themselves cabezas pretas, meaning blackheads. That is, we have to self-define ourselves in terms that have no racist derogatory origins. Because of this, we are homens pretos and mulheres pretas, meaning black women. With that said, let's take a look at a few comments from the video that stirred up the debate once again. If you understand Portuguese, check out the full video and the at the bottom of this article. Now, as you can see in Kwame's comments that this is what he's saying. It's like, we don't wanna be defined as negro because 
he sees negative connotations in that term. Like uh, for, for a lot of people, they have connected the term negro to the word negro, which means dead, actually. So he's saying, no, we don't want to call ourselves negatives. We prefer the term pretos. And this is uh, all this time that it's taken to take Black Brazilians from preto to negro, saying that, okay, negro means more uh, racial consciousness. You're, you're accepting of a Black identity. But after years of organizing into the term negro, a lot of people, more scholarly people, people who are studying in the universities are coming to the conclusion like, no, Pretos is the term that we should be using to define ourselves, right? In some ways, like I said, it's, it's, it's kind of similar to negro, a negro to black in the United States. And it seems like the Brazilians are going from preto to negro and possibly back to, uh, back to preto. Just depends on who you're talking to. So um, preto or negro, uh, the viral video that raised a semantic debate. So this piece is by Marcus uh, Sacramento of the, uh, the Hypeness website. What is the correct word to refer to, say, Afro-descendants or African descendants in Brazil, preto or negro? While the former is used routinely, including on official and academic documents, for musician and Ghanaian activists living in Brazil, Nabi Clifford, preto is the only acceptable term. Clifford is known as an ambassador of reggae in Brazil. Born in Ghana, the musician arrived here in 1983 and since then has become one of the leading names in the divulging of reggae in Brazilian lands and ears. In a recent video, however, Nabi decided to speak out or speak not just about his rhythm, but about something that is not only directly linked to the profound questions of reggae, but also to his cultural identity itself. Nabi recognizing himself not as negro, but as preto. This is him talking. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Nabi, Nabi Clifford from Ghana, a guy living in Brazil for more than three decades. One country, Brazil, uses words such as lista negra, meaning blacklist, gia negro, meaning black day. Uh, what is it? I, I think that, that should be a magical negra, or magica negra, meaning black magic, cambio negro, meaning black trade, vala negra, meaning black grave, mercado negro, meaning black market. Pesta negra, meaning black plague. Buraco negro, meaning black hole. Ovelia negra, meaning black sheep. Fomi negra, meaning black hunger. Humor negro, meaning black humor. Uh, what is that? Seu uh, pasado negro, his dark past. Future negro, or futuro negro, meaning a black future. You shouldn't call a, cow, you shouldn't call a child negro. Get the Portuguese language dictionary. It is written, negro means unhappy, damned. When valuing something, the Brazilian doesn't say negro. He says preto. Okay, so this is, you see, he used all of these terms in a uh, uh, Brazilian terminology. The types of terms, the type of uh, meanings that Brazilians use every day and using all of these words that I just said, all of these terms. And he says, you know, pick up a Brazilian Portuguese uh, dictionary the same way we do in American English. And you'll see that the term negro seems to have negative connotations. He goes on. Uh, he doesn't eat feijão negro, meaning black beans. He eats feijão preto. His car is not a carro negro. His car is a carro preto. He doesn't drink café negro. He drinks café preto. Hunger is negro. When you win the lottery, you win a nota preta, big bucks, lots of money. If branco, meaning white, is not negative, Preto is also not negative. You know, I was uh, this this art, you know this piece came out a few years before the uh, Black Panther movie, and as I've shown repeatedly, um, when Black Panther came to Brazil, it was translated as a Pantera Negra. Okay, let's keep it moving. But Negro, no, Negro is a one hundred percent negative word, and puts you back. It causes death, causes misery, diseases. Since the world has changed, let's change our language too, says Clifford in a video that has more than 6 million views on the Topi Vox Facebook page. Now, you know, I saw the video while, while it was up. I might have saved it some time ago, but it's no longer up. I think the, uh, the video was actually switched over to private now. The impact of the video sparked compliments, but also questions about which word would be more appropriate. A quick search on racial militancy illustrates, per illustrates permits 
or it illustrates or permits one to see that the term negro is widely used. Collectives and organized groups use the word in their names and in texts. On the other hand, the use of preto is increasing, although the word sounds strange to those outside of militancy. In search of more consistent answers, I turn to my friend and activist, uh, Mirchis Santos of the Colectiva, Colectivo Negrada, meaning the Blackened Collective. Or, you know, basically, Negrada can also mean just a group of Black people. Negros who were not in the movement and don't understand what Clifford said repudiate Preto because the word has always been used as a way to attack identidade negra, meaning Black identity. The term Preto is being reframed, explains Mirchis. However, this process doesn't imply the repulsion to the word negro in the way that Americans did with the N-I-G-G-E-R word. The N-word, as they called it, was used routinely, but with the progress of the struggles of the civil rights movement, it was deconstructed to the point of becoming taboo. Maybe this didn't happen in Brazil, to the chagrin of Clifford. The most likely is that the two words coexist, but without the negative meaning that structural racism encrusted upon it. Even expressions like Gia G. Preto, or Black Day, Coisa G. Preto, Black Thing, uh, or uh, A Coisa Está Preta, the, the situation or the thing is Black, show that the term Preto can indeed be used to perpetuate racist concepts. And while the word is reframed and has its empowering sense, it will depend on the context in order to convey the full message. As shown by these two tweets that I found, uh, that I found, we'll think, we'll think about the text and seeing uh, Lewis Hamilton win the GP of uh, Alemania, meaning the, uh, the German Grand Prix, Grand Prix. Um, quote, and another story of a preto who wins, Padam Baines, Lewis Hamilton. Congratulations, Lewis Hamilton. Sincerely, I've never seen such a charming preto. You, you must be the only one also, right? Lewis Hamilton. The first is an example of the inoffensive and empowering use of preto. The second didn't even need pejorative terms to overflow with racism. I want to point out that, um, you know, I did a story on this several months ago where, uh, you know, an old school Brazilian uh, race car driver referred to Lewis Hamilton as a neguinha, a neguinho. A lot of black, black Brazilians take that as a pejorative term. And um, that dude was recently uh, ordered to pay a, a huge fine. Something I have to cover. Hopefully I can get to that in the next couple of weeks. But that made headlines a couple of weeks ago. So anyway, um, uh, notes here it says, although Clifford's opinion is well taken, we must also recognize when the terms preto and preta are used in the context of the racial insult, which is oftentimes, oftentimes that happens. Um, so I wanted to point, it, point this out as I was talking about a, a translation website that I sometimes use. So I'm going to open it up real quick. Okay, so um, this is a, a site I often use when I'm looking for meanings of certain terms in Portuguese and you know, what's the best way to translate a certain term or phrase or word from Portuguese to English. I, I never learned how to say what this site is called. I don't know if it's lingui or lingui. Not sure. But anyway, you will notice here that the term preto, while it also means just black and dark, as you can see here, when we talk about the racial insult, if somebody will say, you know, get away from me, you preto sujo, you know, like you dirty black. Preto in Brazilian Portuguese for some people can also be translated as the infamous N-word, you know, because it can be used as an insult. So you see here on one of the translation sites that's, it's, you know, it's not my imagination, but in the same way that Black Americans use the term, you know, the infamous N-word, it can be used as an insult from people outside of the community. It can be used as a, a term of endearment within the Black community. So we see the same way that depending on how the word preto is used, in defining somebody, somebody could take it as, you know, an affectionate term or somebody could take it as being a racist insult. So we see some of the same dynamics going on here between negro, preto. A lot of Black Brazilians actually use the term Black in English because it's, everybody know, is familiar with that term, uh, how it translates from Portuguese into English is just Black, you know. Plus, they consume so much stuff that comes out of the United States, and they know that Americans of African descent just define themselves as Black. So people may be, you know, negro or preto in Brazil, but increasingly some people might call themselves Black. Also understand that the Afro that we talk about when you have a big, large Afro on top of your head, a lot of people will call that, because in Brazil, 
they associate the Afro with the 60s and 70s when African Americans were wearing those huge Afros. So they call it, a, they associate it with the Black Power movement. So instead of just calling it an Afro like Americans do, they call it a Black Power. And then from Black Power, they just started calling Afros Black. Like it goes to sell Black. Like I like your Afro, right? Anyway, I'm getting way off the topic. So this is some. Um, this is intriguing to see the development of, you know, this, this black consciousness that's going on and just the debates that's going on about how the black population in Brazil should define itself. So I just wanted to share that um, because I thought it was intriguing. Um, it, it, it's also it seems that a lot of people ask, well, why don't we just refer to them as Afro-Brazilians? And, you know, in I find the term Af what, they, what we say in Afro-Brazilian in English they say afro brasileiro in Portuguese. And it just seems like that term hasn't really caught on in Brazil. You know, you find it more in academia in, you know, uh, scholarly articles or books where they'll use the term afro brasileiro But among the general population, you don't find afro brasileiro being used as much as Black Americans say African Americans. So just wanted to straighten that out. So this, again, this is an article from 2016, but it's still a debate that's going on now. So, Preto o Negro. Um, so, I'm going to just leave that there. That's the video. Um, curious to know what your thoughts are about this. D definitely feel free to leave a comment here. Uh, consider subscribing to this channel if you've checked out more than a few of the videos here. Um, give me that thumbs up. That will definitely help me with the algorithms and consider no, uh, clicking on the notification bell. So you'll be one of the first people to see new videos when I post them. So with that said, I'm going to end this video here and hope you guys come to check out the next one.